Well, hello. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica. I'm a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. If you are new here, this is the Pet Parenting Reset, where we talk about all things dog training, dog behavior, cat behavior, nutrition, enrichment, all the wonderful things with a holistic spin. Today we are talking about adopting sibling litter mate dogs, puppies. Yes, it's a thing. In fact, people call it litter mate syndrome. We're going to break that down and we're going to talk about it so that you can make the right decision for you and your family, whether you should be adopting a single dog or litter mates. So it's very common that people say, if you're gonna adopt a cat, adopt two cats, right? Like having a one cat is wonderful, it's incredible, but having a cat for your cat is going to possibly even save some of your sanity, right? However, when we turn that around and we look at dogs, is adopting two dogs together at the same time, especially if they are puppies from the same litter, is that going to be better for you and your family? Is it gonna be better for that puppy, for those puppies? Hmm, let's break that down. So first and foremost, you may have heard the term litter mate syndrome. Everything we're talking about today is all anecdotal. There are no scientific studies to back any of this up. However, there is some pretty extensive information out there and many, many veterinarians and dog trainers advise against getting two litter mate puppies from from the same litter, right? Getting two puppies from the same litter can be a very daunting task, and here is why. So what most veterinarians and trainers have noticed with litter mates, when you adopt two litter mates together, what can often happen is that these two dogs bond more so than they bond with any humans in the family. Now, this is going to lead to an array of issues in the household from training issues, so they might be more stubborn, they're going to rely a lot on one another. Um, there generally will be one dog that is more confident and the other one is going to rely very heavily on that more confident dog to the point of separation anxiety and they need to be together and when they are separated they almost can't function or certainly can't function well and then of course there's the issue with potty training you're dealing with two puppies at once who may or may not be bonding well with the humans in the family and only wanting to stick together that's all it's not all bad news stick around <laughs> but i just want to get the issues out of the way first so potty training can be much more difficult and time consuming because they are so bonded now put those issues aside and the reality is there are positive ways that we can integrate litter mate puppies into a household yes it will take a little bit more time. Yes, it will certainly take more patience, but it is absolutely possible. And the way we do this, I have a story for you in just a minute, but the way we do this is by providing them with their own spaces. They're going to have separate crates. They are certainly gonna have plenty of time together, right? We're a family when we spend time together as a family, but they're going to have their separate bedrooms, their crates, right? They're going to have separate play times individually with us as humans. We're going to work on training with them individually. We're going to build their confidence through training individually so they become happy, healthy, well-adjusted dogs with confidence built on their own and not using their litter mate as a crutch. Now, will this take more time? Yes. Will this take more patience? Very, very probably. Will this take more dedication? Absolutely. Is it possible? Yes, it is. So I know that dogs and human children, totally different, very different species. However, in parenting little children and parenting and raising young puppies, even cats, a lot of the methods are actually pretty similar if you use positive reinforcement, which is the only training methods I ever use or recommend for dogs and cats. So positive reinforcement is pretty universal for all animals, even for plants. Like if you think about, this isn't part of the story, <laughs> this is a separate story, but if you think about studies done with plants and flowers, when we feed them positivity, when we feed them happy music, when we say positive, 
positive words to plants, they flourish and they grow. When we say negative things to plants, when we play negative music, they, do, they don't flourish and grow. There are studies to prove this, and the same thing is true with our dogs. The same thing is true with our cats. The same thing is true with us as humans. So the story that I'm about to tell you is actually very relevant because my stepdaughter has a one and a half year old twin boys. And when we found out that she was pregnant with bo uh, twins, I, I didn't do a ton of research. For some reason, when you start thinking about something, that is everything you see, right? Like if you just buy a blue car, then you see start seeing blue cars everywhere. I did a little bit of research on twins and raising twins to be independent individuals is very similar to how we would need to raise litter mate puppies to be individuals to be confident on their own without using each other as a crutch so what one thing that twin human babies often do one their speech they, they may talk later than other than single babies later in life and also they often will create their own language between each other. Some twins have even been infamously known for only speaking to each other and never speaking to anyone else in the world. That's pretty crazy, but does and has happened. And with, <laughs> with my stepdaughter's twins, they are speaking later than they should. They're going to speech therapy right now and it's really, really helping them. But one thing that my husband and I encouraged her to do, and she's super smart, and she figured all of this out on her own anyway, is to treat those two twins as individuals. So we don't dress them the same, right? We talk to them differently. We don't call them the twins. We call them by their individual names. That's very important with raising two very well-adjusted individuals, even though they're twins. Same is true for raising litter mate puppies. Now, yes, again, don't come at me. I know dogs and humans are not the same. They are two different species. However, <laughs> this is actually very, very similar the way I see it in individualizing twin baby, human babies and individualizing litter mate puppies because we need to raise them to be completely confident individuals and not each other's crutch. I hope that makes sense. Please comment down below and let me know if that makes sense to you um, because in my mind it makes perfect sense. <laughs> so what's the moral of this story? Hmm, there's no right or wrong answer here. Should you get litter mates? Well, it really depends on you and your family. Are you willing to put in the extra time and effort it's going to take to raise two individual puppies and not raise them as a single unit that is going to create two, two dogs who rely on each other so heavily that very often separation anxiety ensues and and um, training becomes very difficult and <laughs> they don't necessarily create bonds with humans. No, we don't want that. So we are going to have to put in that extra energy, that extra effort to make sure they have their own crates, they have their own separate bedrooms, make sure we're training with them individually, make sure we are playing with them individually and together, make sure we are walking them individually and together. All of these things are so important in creating individuals in our dogs. It's easy to do when we have a single dog, much harder when we have two litter mates. So one person I know who has done this very, very well is Kimberly Gautier over at Keep the Tail Wagging. She raised litter mates and she did it beautifully. <laughs> and so she has talked about raising litter mates and that she doesn't, I don't wanna say she doesn't understand, she does understand what people have to say about why you shouldn't have litter mates and she understands litter mate syndrome, but that wasn't her experience. So if you wanna read about um, Kimberly raising litter mates, you can go to Keep the Tail Wagging. She has a blog over there and I would highly encourage you to do so after you finish this video. So yes, there is no right or wrong answer here. It completely depends on if you are up to the challenge. 
So I do hope this video was helpful, especially if you are currently on the fence about raising litter mates, or maybe you got two litter mates and you now are like, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? I hope this was helpful. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If so, comment down below and let me know all about it. And if you're not already subscribed, why not? Make sure you look down there at that subscribe button. Make sure it is clicked. You are subscribed. You have checked all the bells and whistles. You're getting notifications. And become part of the family over on Patreon. The link is in the description below. Joining Patreon can cost as little as a dollar a month. And what happens is you get all new content, exclusive content, behind the scenes content, first look at content that goes up everywhere else. And you're supporting content like this coming out to you and other pet parents. Also make sure you are following the podcast wherever you get your podcast, search the Pet Parenting Reset, give it a follow, listen to some of the episodes, you're gonna love them, then rate the podcast as well. I really hope you do that so that we can get this podcast out to more people. With that, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and give your pets some extra love for me. Until next time, bye guys. <laughs>